All right, so I've got a special video for you guys today. Katie surprised me with a trip to Tennessee. We're driving right now. We are heading to Tale of the Dragon, and uh, we have a special guest. Let me show you. What happened? It's a piece of plastic. I'm gonna try to see if I can cut it off. I hit that bump back there and I guess the uh, tire hit the fender well, the fender liner. Yeah, it's pretty janked. <laughs> Southeast US, deep in the Appalachian Mountains lurks a monster. Snaking its way across the North Carolina Tennessee border. Around here, its jagged contours have earned it the nickname Tail of the Dragon. After Katie successfully navigated the 318 turns, it was my turn to get behind the wheel. Yeah, I'm just checking coolant lines and uh, that's pretty much it. I need to do a new serpentine belt soon. Do you like the strut bar? Yeah. It helped a lot. What did you think of the dragon? Scary. Yeah. <laughs> What did you think about it driving with me? Really scary. <laughs> I was afraid this thing was going to give out. Oh, no. Remember I built this. Yeah. <laughs> no, I did a full inspection before we left out, so. how this footage is gonna look but it's really something that you have to experience in person to really know like what it feels like the inertia the gravity is just insane um, I'm not like a professional driver or anything like that so I was really taking it easy especially with the car we do have to drive this home like nine hours back to our house um, but it was a good time we don't have roads like this where we live like everything is just flat and straight so it's just crazy to see like what these cars are actually capable of on these curvy roads Dave, do your impression of my exhaust. Come on.
Alright, so this part is for the longtime fans. I know people ask, like, what's up with the E90, so it's kind of crazy to see it here again after it's been like six months, I think, since I sold it. But yeah, we're gonna check out what's different on it and uh, maybe take it for a drive. So I haven't really changed much under the hood. I'll put a Megan Racing strut bar here. It really, uh, it's a really good mod for an E90. It helps the front end stay on the road a little better. Um, here in Tennessee, we got some really fun twisty mountain roads that, that really helps out. Um, I did take off the cabin air filter cowl here. It's a big unnecessary piece of plastic there. I put the Berger Motorsports filters on for my uh, cabin air. And since I'm gonna be doing all my own engine work, that saves me about 20, 20 ish minutes every time I have to replace a spark plug or ignition coil. So, so what's uh, broken that. on it since you had it? Um, the axle has broken, the rear subframe's going out. Mm, I had a cylinder four misfire, fixed that. Um, the paint on the front bumper starting to chip up really bad. Yeah, that's my bad for yeah. no, going cheap on the fault. paint job. <laughs> I think I paid like 300 bucks to get this painted back in the day. Yeah, I'll have this repainted and uh, I'm going to put paint protection film on the front of it because this is my daily driver now. I'll drive this every single day. Um, other than that, nothing's really broken on it. Um, Justin's had it for the glory days of the first 100,000 miles, so I know what to expect in the next, my other 100,000 miles of ownership. So there's nothing on this car I can't fix myself, so I plan on keeping it forever. All right. This feels so weird. Whoa, you sit like in the back. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see. Let's get this. It feels so weird sitting in this thing because mm -hmm. I owned it for so long. And then like to see it like six months later, it's like all these crazy memories coming back to me right now. Yeah. Do you miss the driving experience? I miss the steering feel for sure. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I don't know. It's just really weird taking it all in right now. It's just bizarre. So a lot of people ask, like, if I miss this car. And, uh, like, honestly, the original plan was to keep this forever, like, along with my new car. But once I got the F30, I wasn't really driving this one that much. So I like as a car guy, it kind of hurt to just see it like sitting um, like parked in the side of my driveway, like knowing that there's someone out there that can actually appreciate it. Like he daily drives this car. This is like the only car that he has. So he's taking it to work. He's taking it on dates. Um, but yeah, it, for me, like I wanted to see someone that could really enjoy it and just like get more use out of it than I was getting. It's funny, like, just looking around in here, like, I remember all the videos that I made, like, the shift knob, the start button, the rear fog light, uh, the phone mount steering wheel. It's like, I'm just seeing all these videos that I've made. It's kind of, like, surreal. But, yeah, it's really cool because a lot of people don't have the opportunity, like, after they sell their car to be able to, like, get back in it and drive it at a later time. So, it's, it's a weird feeling. All the E90 guys think the F30 just has no soul because of the electric steering and such. Mm -hmm. What would you say about that? Um, I will say that the steering on the F30 is not as good, but you do get used to it. Like, it's never going to feel quite the same, but um, for me, it wasn't something that stopped me from buying the car. Like, you can upgrade the suspension. Like, I put a strut brace on myself. Uh, the wider tires help a lot in the front, so, like, you can have it feeling pretty good. It's not going to feel quite the same, but it's not like something that would keep me from buying the car. Mm -hmm. So what's your uh, favorite memory made in this E90? It's hard to say because it's been so much stuff. Like we got married in this car, like our wedding. We drove to the reception in this, our honeymoon. Um, just like my whole YouTube career was started based on this car. I think I kind of got lucky in that way. I like to think that it was my uh, videography or something, but I know that a lot of my success had to do with, these are just so common and so popular that there was a need for um, like video information on them. So I'm not even in the lane. First left. So my personal favorite modification is the uh, M3 steering wheel. Mm -hmm. um, what was your favorite modification to do with oh. this car? I'm gonna have to go with the 1552 wheels. Yeah. Because like a lot of people say, 
you shouldn't have put those on there. They don't look like BMW wheels. Well, that's the reason that I like them so much because I think like I come from like the Japanese car scene where uh, like your car is kind of an extension of your creativity and like the more wild you get with it, like the more people like it. And then you go to BMW world and it's like, oh, why would you change the wheels? Why are you doing that? But that's why I like it. I like to do things different. And uh, still to this day, I think that the 1552 Tarmacs are one of my all time favorite wheel designs. That's the best. <laughs> that is so cool. That's nice. <laughs> so you said you like the E90 interior better? Yes. What What do you like about that? Um, I feel like it's more simplistic and driver focused. Like yeah. you can see the F30 here. There's just so many buttons and stuff in the way. And especially like even on the side, then the iDrive menus all just kind of like all over the place. I feel like it kind of distracts you from the road. Right. And Honestly, I mean, that's really my only complaint. Um, I prefer the F30s over the G20s. The G20s, when I worked at the dealership, the interior looked like a freaking spaceship. Mm -hmm. So, but it's funny because like on all of the three series, like from E90 to F30 and the G20, they don't change the rear like at all. Mm -hmm. You still get an on and off uh, gauge for the air, and hot and cold for the air, like a 12 volt AC plug-in. And yeah. that's like, that's really it. You would think they put some like heating elements in the rear seats or something. Yeah. But they're all the same in the rear. God. <laughs> that throttle response is ridiculous. I love it. I got my fill. <laughs> well, it's been an awesome weekend. Thank you to Katie for surprising me with this. Thank you to Austin and Kayla for having us over. It was a great time. Thanks for showing us around. And uh, that's it. <laughs> Until next time. In the next one. In the next one. <laughs>